what a delight we have for you today. Arthur Ashe, one of the world's finest tennis players. Used to be. Still, well, that's something we haven't seen me play recently. Do you play at all anymore? Arthur? I fiddle around with it, that's all. Yeah. Just play recreationally with my wife. You know, well, the, the question that on everybody's lips is, how could someone, an athlete in the condition that you were it's in... in my family genes. Have yes. a bi bypass surgery? Yes. You can inherit heart disease, which was the case with me. Who had it in your family? Both parents. My mother died uh, when I was six years old. She was 27 of heart disease. My father's had one heart attack, and he has, a, has a heart disease now. So I just inherited two bad sets of genes. But did you eat right? Did, did you exercise? Well, I, I, did. Exercise. I did, obviously, because athletes, I think, in general, take care of themselves better than ordinary folk. But uh, it was 90% of it was family history. But did you abuse yourself in any way? Yeah. I mean, not, hey, no, wait a minute, no. now, Arthur, what about yeah. the stress? The stress, stress of playing, yes. Yes. you know, tennis on an international, the world That's level. True. But there's good stress and bad stress. It's not as if my life depended on it. And uh, there's a, I think some stress is probably good for you. But you're right, stress played a part. How much, I don't know. I think, I think the racial stress was much more of a factor than the stress of me winning or losing. Because, Why, uh, because you were a symbol? No, uh, when I was uh, a junior player, I was not allowed to play in any junior events in my home state or my home city. Why? Because uh, this was pre-civil rights era Virginia, pre-1964 when things were segregated. So I played at a, an all-black playground, and uh, if I wanted to do well or be noticed nationally, I had to do well in, in the white tournament in, in my hometown, my home state, and I couldn't play in those places. In fact, I only played in one mixed tournament my entire life as a junior before age 18. Is that what is called a mixed tournament? Well, we call it mixed. <laughs> Men and women, or blacks and whites, <laughs> Gentiles and Jews. <laughs> well, is that why there are so few blacks in tennis? Not now, no. That was the reason, I'd say, before 1965. But now it's, it's a matter of cultural emphasis now. We, we're just in, black athletes, I mean, are just into other sports. Our big five are boxing, track, baseball, basketball, and football. Football. Right. You know, this is your and Nebraska, Nebraska, right. We are Tom talking Osborne. About. <laughs> uh, do you know he had the same surgery I know, he had? I know. Tom, I met Tom once. We he talked did. about it, yes. Well, the odd thing about him, like you, is he didn't drink, he didn't smoke. And he's, and he's not fat. Well, no, no, he's weight. slender, he runs, but... He didn't talk about this. There stress. is a great deal of oh, stress. A lot of stress. And he also said junk food. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're too busy to sit down and eat the proper kind of meal, so sometimes mm -hmm. a lot of the hot dogs and the hamburgers and, and those kinds of things. But you ate all right. Yes. I can't believe that Tom is still in that job, though. I mean, I know he has a problem, and I've met him before. And when I see him on TV, and I, obviously Nebraska's on in the fall, you know, I say to my wife, Tom shouldn't be doing what he's doing. Do you know how impassive his face? Do you ever look at his I know, face? But it, it's not his physical demeanor on the outside. You know, inside, he's churning. He has to be churning because college coaches, you know, they live by their wins and losses. It's mm -hmm. as simple as that. Mm -hmm. You seem very controlled, too. Well, on the outside. You're churning up inside? Sometimes, sometimes, yes. What, what still makes you angry, Arthur? Uh... Bad drivers. <laughs> <laughs> really bad drivers in Nebraska. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the guy who won't turn right on a red when they can, and I'm behind them. That drives me up the uh, wall. Yeah. Have you really become a symbol for young, for young blacks coming up? No, I, I think they are looking toward other symbols now who are more visible and, and younger than I am. But I still... Young? You're what, 42? Well, 42, two. but... Uh, You're just a baby. <laughs> In one sense, yes, in that quite a few books have been written by or about me that they can find in their school libraries, and obviously, inevitably, at some stage, both black and white kids, or oriental kids for that matter, or, or whatever, uh, are asked to do book reports, and quite a few kids like to do book reports on athletes, ex-athletes, mm -hmm. and there's a very wide range of uh, choices for me, because uh, there must be about four or five books in the library about me, mm -hmm. whereas there may be just maybe one or, or maybe none about some others. Mm -hmm. How old were you when you started to play tennis? Seven. How old should the children be? For our viewers who are watching and they've got a kid who says, I want to play tennis, how young should they start? Well, if, if a kid says, I want to play tennis, then they can start whenever a kid can say, I want to play tennis. But formalized instruction, I think any time between seven and nine 
a 10 is, is okay. Well, if you take it very seriously, it can be a very expensive sport down the long haul. Yes, but uh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I can't, sorry, I can't qualify that statement. Uh, that statement is just correct. Yes, it can be very expensive, no question about it. In 20, 30, $40,000 to raise uh, an athlete in tennis to the age of 17, 18 on the competitive trail. Oh, you, you could spend 20000 a year. Well, it depends if you're playing the big tournaments. Yes. Well, but then again, if you want to get a very high national or international ranking, you're going to try to play the big tournaments. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, at least equipment, if you're a good player, equipment can be loaned to you free of charge, uh, shoes, rackets, and clothes. But what you must pay for is travel, hotel, and, and meals. That and, and your lessons at, at the beginning, that would cost you. What about the Prince racket, the oversized racket? It's legitimate, is it not? Oh, sure. Prince is a very good company. It, it's not my company head, but it's not bad. <laughs> but what about it's that oversized racket, yes. face? I mean, is that is it a good racket? Is it fair? I think it, I th sure, I think it's fair. It doesn't materially change the sport as we know it today or knew it 100 years ago, but it definitely makes life easier for, for the average club player, the playground player. No question. That's why... All the manufacturers have oversized rackets. They've done fairly well with them. What about the sweet spot? Is that still there on a racket with a surface that size? Well, it depends upon the uh, shape of the head. Some uh, rackets are made so that the sweet spot is in different places. In general, for the oversized racket, the sweet spot is in the middle and near the bottom of the strings. And in, in mid-sized rackets, the sweet spot is more, clo more uh, toward the middle. Uh, and in uh, standard size rackets, of which we see very few these days, uh, the sweet <laughs> spot might be smack dab in the middle. Is it put there or you just find it? No. Every racket from a reputable manufacturer will have attached to the racket itself when you buy it a hang tag. And the hang tag will show you where the sweet spot should be in the stringing if you string it between two figures given as parameters for the least tension and the maximum tension. Mm -hmm. from, for most of the medium and oversized rackets, string tensions vary from, I would say, roughly 64 to 72 pounds. Mm -hmm. Arthur, is tennis elbow a part of the game? Do you have to get tennis Percent elbow if you're no, really going to play the game? Not necessarily, but quite a few people do get it. Does yes. it mean you're hitting the ball incorrectly? It could be, not necessarily. You could be holding the racket wrong. Uh, that's a major cause of it. It may be just because you didn't warm up properly on, a, on any given day. Maybe because you have just fatigued a certain part of your uh, of, of the joint here. You can actually get tennis elbow in two places. You can get it on top and you can get it on the bottom. Uh, and so they have multiple causes. But well, it's then we not call it tennis. A u oh, evolve. What, what's the the uvula? No, the uvula is in the back there. What is this called? The ulna, the upper bone in the forearm. Ulna. The ulna. So we'd have tennis ulna, yeah. not tennis elbow. Yeah. Do you have children, Arthur? No. No children. I was going to ask you, would you, would you, if you did have, would you want them to be professional tennis players? If, if they wanted to be. I'd certainly expose them to tennis. I think every parent should go to great lengths to expose their child, each child, to at least two life sports. That is, two sports which they can play the rest of their life because the sports that are stressed in the public school systems are really the wrong sports for kids because when they leave the school system, whether they go to college or not, they will never play those sports again, generally. You will not play football anymore. You might play baseball, but, but if you do, it's going to be softball for an American Legion uh, League or something. Very few are going to play basketball ever again. So what are you going to do? You've got to have two life sports. Two sports that you can participate in the rest of your life, and tennis is one of them. And golf. Golf. And swimming. swimming. Yes. Sure. Running, cycling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good racquetball. Good. Oh, that's my, that's my, that's my sport. And uh, I, I had one of those little pains that hurt right here, oh. and I thought, oh, I'm hitting it the wrong way. I had way. tennis elbow in 1968. I had a couple of cortisone shots, then it went away. Uh, forever and ever. Did not come back anymore. Uh, but do you feel the urge anymore to get out there, though, and, and play? Are you concerned only, about only your Only when I am at Wimbledon uh, <laughs> broadcasting for HBO. Uh, I miss playing on the center court at Wimbledon sometimes. That's all.
I don't miss practice, that's for sure. <laughs> well, you've been a very significant part of the tennis world and still are. Thank you. Nice to hear that. And now representing Le Coq Thank Sportif. You. Yes, we're doing quite well. We're doing quite well. Thank you, Arthur. A real pleasure to meet you. Thanks. Carry on. Please stay with us. We've got a lot more to come as the morning show continues.